Hello, my name's Kishanti Kara, and I'm talking to you once again from the Shrine Room at the London Buddhist Centre. Today, I'll be leading you for the next 25 minutes to half an hour in a meditation where we'll recollect the Buddha. So hopefully you've tried a few of our guided meditations by now, and I know many of you are being sent to this link after doing a course at the London Buddha Centre. So if you've done a few of our guided meditations, attended some of our classes, or done one of our courses, be it an introduction to Buddhism, journey in the guide, life with full attention, or even if you've just been meditating, you'll have some sense of the Buddha. Hopefully you'll have heard some of the Buddha's life story. Hopefully you'll have got a sense of some of the qualities of the Buddha. And today, we'll be recollecting the Buddha in our minds. The Buddha had a strong effect on the people he met. Something of his presence seems to reach out to the people around him, often changing their life, just by spending time with this enlightened man, the Buddha, people's lives change. And as human beings, we respond to personality. It's when qualities are embodied in a person that we can look up to them and move towards them. So for thousands of years, that's what people have done. It's not enough to dwell or to contemplate just the qualities of the Buddha, or even to just think his teaching is good or useful. It's really important that we experience it embodied in an individual, in a personality. So for thousands of years, people have sat down, meditated, and imaginatively dwelt in the presence of the Buddha. So that's what we're going to try today, and I'll lead you through it. So for now, you just need to close your eyes, settle into your meditation posture, and then we'll begin. As ever, sinking down into the ground, allowing the floor, chair or cushions to take our weight. You can imagine yourself like a mountain, sinking heavy into the ground while rising into the sky. And before we start to recollect or to bring the Buddha to mind, let's take a few minutes to tune into the experience of our body. Sinking down into the ground, rising into the sky. We can start to become aware of our body, the sensations of our body. Let's start with the muscles of our face. Once again, softening any holding on around the eyes or our mouth. Are you clenching your jaw? Just do what you can to soften that out. We don't need to be doing anything particular with our face right now. So with our eyes closed, sitting here meditating, we can just completely let the muscles of our face let go, untighten and relax. With your hands supported in your lap or on a cushion, you can really give up the weight of your arms to its support. 
Allow your shoulders to fall down your back. Perhaps opening your chest slightly. Noticing too any holding on in our belly. Is there a sense of bracing in our thighs or in our legs? Do we feel ready to get up at any moment? Taking these moments at the beginning of our meditation to comb through the experience of your body, softening tension where you can, particularly the face, shoulders, belly, and thighs, sinking down into the ground, softening our body, preparing to recollect the Buddha, to sit here in his presence. So as we start to turn our attention to bringing the Buddha to mind, let's make sure to stay in this experience of our bodies too. At any point during this meditation, you can return to your body, combing through it once again from top to bottom, letting go of any tension and holding on where you can. And we can anchor our experience of this meditation in our breath as well. Just lightly noticing the breath as it comes in and out of our body. The sensations of the breath as it passes through our experience. No need to change the breath. No need to massively change our posture. But just softening our bodies and becoming aware of the subtle breath as it passes in and out of our body. And now we can start to imagine that we're in the presence of the Buddha. In the presence of an enlightened being. So perhaps you've seen images of the Buddha. Seen a rupa or statue at a Buddha center or been in a shrine room. You could recollect that, bring that to mind. Perhaps you're the kind of person that would like to imagine yourself in ancient India. Perhaps you find yourself on a dusty Indian plain and just in front of you, you notice a giant Bodhi tree with a man sitting in meditation underneath it. And immediately, you're drawn to this man. There's something about him that seems different, attractive. There's something about him that glows. So you could call to mind a sense of a Buddha's presence. You could use images you've seen before. 
You could imagine yourself on this Indian plain with the Buddha sitting underneath a Bodhi tree. Or perhaps like me, you're not a particularly visual person. But with your eyes closed, a softened body, an awareness of your breath, and even a sense of your heart center, the sensations in the middle of your chest. Perhaps you're not particularly able to see the Buddha or see an enlightened being, but you can cultivate, you can imagine a felt sense of their presence. Taking a moment to call the Buddha to mind and dwelling in his presence. You could just imagine he's here with you in the room, meditating alongside you. What would that be like? To sit in a room, meditating, working on your mind, in touch with your body and your experience with this sense of the Buddha, the enlightened one, the shower of the way, sitting beside you, meditating too. And of course, we're not literally trying to see the Buddha. It's a metaphor. So check you're not screwing up your eyes, creating tension in your face, desperately trying to see or visualize. As I said, you don't need to think in terms of sight at all. Just imagine the Buddha is here with you. And it doesn't matter if you don't know what he looks like or you don't know what it would be like to be with him. In a way, none of us do. But in this exercise, we are allowing our imaginations to take hold. Bringing the Buddha to mind. and meditating in that presence. While making this active effort to dwell in the Buddha's presence, make sure to also be receptive. After cultivating this sense of the Buddha's presence, this sense of the enlightened one being with you now, return to being receptive. Check back in the feeling sensations around your heart, around your belly. What can you feel? Is the Buddha present to you in some way, even some small way? And what is it like? Does it change the sensations of your body? Does it move your emotions?
And if there's no sense of presence, if the Buddha isn't there, as it were, well then notice what his absence feels like. Even this sense of absence, this sense of nothing very much going on, if that's what you're feeling, that too is a kind of contact. So explore this sense of the Buddha's absence. What is it like not to feel a sense of the Buddha's presence? Just remember, we're just sort of playing. We're not taking this too seriously. We're bringing the Buddha to mind, doing what we can to cultivate a sense of presence. We might find that to be visual, it might be based on images we've seen. It might be sense of a felt sense of entering a shrine room at a Buddha center. Or maybe it's a sense of presence, a sense of the Buddha just being here with us. Or maybe some sort of taste you've had of meditation going well, or of being generous or a feeling of freedom or beauty. You can just imagine what those experiences would be like, turned up to maximum volume and experienced 100% of the time. You can imagine using your own small experiences of meditation, what it would be like to be around a man who just was generous whose mind just was, is, undisturbed. A man for whom there is no anger, no fear, no pride, nothing to disturb his mind or his composure. A man with no regrets. A man who is not addicted to pleasure, not frightened of pain, who is gentle but alert. A man for whom there is no craving and no passions. A man who understands the way things really are. Free from despondency. No more craving, no more hatred, no ignorance or fear. A man of calm, of wisdom, of creativity, of love. What would it be like to be in the presence of such a man, of such a being? to dwell here in the presence of the Buddha. Doing what you can to call the Buddha to mind. Dwelling in his presence. And taking your time to to be receptive to the effect. What is it like to dwell in the Buddha's presence? Checking the feeling sensations around your heart center, your body, perhaps your belly. What can you feel? And once again, if the Buddha isn't present, noticing too what that absence feels like. I'll leave you for a few moments to cultivate this presence of the Buddha, doing what you can to awaken your imagination and noticing too the effect it has on you.
Here we sit, recollecting the Buddha, calling to mind his qualities, his sense of presence, and noticing the effect. What would it be like to dwell with such a man? What might that inspire in us? And once again, being careful not to overdo it. We're just playing. We're using metaphor. We're using our felt sense, our imagination and our experience. We're not literally trying to see him. There's no need to screw up your eyes or your face. And there's no need to be frustrated if you don't feel any presence at all. Meditating in the presence of the Buddha and noticing the effect on our experience. And in the last part of this meditation, continue to recollect the presence of the Buddha. And I'm going to read to you for a few minutes the experience of someone who met the Buddha and is sharing it with a friend. So as I do so, you can just allow the words, the story, this man's description of the Buddha, to settle into your experience, land in your meditation, and maybe even affect your own sense, your own recollection, your own presence of the Buddha. I will sing you the praises of the way to the beyond, sent Pingia, when he returned to where the Brahmin Bhavari lives on the banks of the river Godvari. It was described to us by this man exactly as he saw it. But then there isn't any reason why a man like him should lie. A mammoth of knowledge and completely pure, a man without desire, when a voice has none of the glibness of pride and none of the ingrained stains of ignorance, then its words are full of sweetness and beauty. It is such words that I praise now. They call him Buddha, enlightened, awake, dissolving darkness with total vision and knowing the world to its ends. 
he has gone beyond all the states of being and of becoming. He has no inner poison drives. He is the total elimination of suffering. This man, Brahmin Bavari, is the man I follow. It is like a bird that leaves the brushes of the scrubland and flies to the fruit trees of the forest. I, too, have left the bleary half-light of opinions. Like a swan, I have reached a great lake. Up till now, before I heard Gautama's teaching, people had always told me this. This is how it has always been, and this is how it will always be. Only the constant refrain of tradition, a breeding ground for speculation. This prince... This beam of light, Gautama, was the only one who dissolved the darkness. This man, Gautama, is a universe of wisdom and a world of knowledge. A teacher whose dharma is the way things are, instant, immediate, and visible all around. Eroding desire without harmful side effects, with nothing else quite like it anywhere in the world. But Pingia, said Bavari, why then don't you spend all your every time, your every moment with this man Gotama, this universe of wisdom, this world of understanding, this teacher whose dharma is the way things are, instant, immediate, and visible all around, eroding desire without harmful side effects, with nothing else quite like it anywhere in the world. Brahmin, sir, said Pingia, there is no moment for me, however small, that is spent away from Gautama, from this universe of wisdom, this world of understanding, this teacher whose teaching is the way things are, instant, immediate, and visible all around, eroding desire without harmful side effects, with nothing else quite like it anywhere in the world. You see, sir, said Pingia, with constant and careful vigilance, it is possible for me to see him with my mind eye as clearly as I see him with my eyes, in night as well as day. And since I spend my nights revering him, There is no moment, to my mind, no single moment spent away from him. I cannot now move away from the teaching of Gautama, the powers of confidence and joy, of intellect and awareness hold me there. Whichever way this universe of wisdom goes, it draws me with it. There are no more questions for the doubtful who come to him. The teacher has answered them all. Yes, I shall go there. I shall go beyond change. I shall go beyond formations. I shall go beyond comparison. There are no more doubts. You may consider this as a mind released. Just like this example from Pingia, we can dwell in the presence of the Buddha. In these last few moments of the meditation, once again, connecting with this presence of the Buddha, recollecting his qualities, dwelling in his presence, and noticing the effect.
great. So hopefully together, we've been able to conjure up a sense of the Buddha and to dwell in his presence, recollecting his quality, recollecting stories from his life perhaps, but dwelling together with a sense of presence of the enlightened mind. We can take this with us now as we carry on with our day. And in my experience, calling to mind the Buddha, calling to mind these qualities of the enlightened mind, can bring our emotions, can bring our imagination, the mysterious parts of ourselves. It can bring those onto the path, into our lives. It may not come easily to you, but it's a good thing to cultivate. Until next time, goodbye.